So Kyle did a great segment on Secular Talk on this the other day. He's actually done a bunch like this. Pretty much everything he says here is everything that I agree with. I would just add a couple things to it, I guess, about how laughably out of step and tone deaf it is when mostly mainstream Democrats do their surface-level pop culture outreach to disaffected groups. I mean, and all it is really, it's a distraction from talking about economic issues, from substantive policy that they're, they're hoping that people aren't paying attention. They're either just so disconnected that they really think that that this is what we want to hear, or they know that it's going to make us angry, but they just think, Oh, if five, 10% of people that really aren't paying that much attention, if it just gets them, Hey, it's something's better than nothing. There's really three different groups that they do this to, you know, young people, Gen Z and millennials, you know, people under 40, specifically more so under 30, the left in general, you know, the actual left, the socialist leaning left, the Bernie left, and people of color, minorities. A good example off the top of my head I can give you of all three of those is, you know, for um, for people of color, you know, it's Joe playing Despacito on his phone instead of talking about, you know, let's say immigration issues. Um, for young people, it's, you know, you know, the, the, like the animal crossing stuff and, and stuff like this for, 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 you know, for the left, it's doing the stupid task forces, which I knew was just some symbolic, you know, window dressing thing where it's going to be nothing substantive just because he's adding AOC and some actual lefties onto the platform. He's not going to do anything that they want to do. He's just going to brush it off and do everything that the Republican light Democrat side of it wants to do. It's just meant to look like it's, it's meant to look like change without actually being change, which in effect ends up like pissing everybody off. It pisses and it pisses the right off because it, then it looks like they're reaching out to us when they really aren't. I mean, you know, how frustrating is it when some right winger says, Oh, they're far left. They're Antifa. It's like they think we, they think that they are us when in reality they hate us. But this really goes back to the, the reason that they do this, I feel, is if it worked once, if it was profitable once, they'll beat it into the ground hoping it works again. And I'll tell you what this goes back to, because I'm so old, I actually, I didn't know anything about politics, but I'm so old, I actually do remember 92. And this goes back to it's when Bill Clinton was, you know, doing, and it, for that time, it did work. You know, he, I thought he was just, you know, this when I was a kid, I thought he was just this cool guy that played the sax on Arsenio. You can see in the sidebar there. And then he, and he did a bunch of these, you know, town halls, you know, and talking to teenagers on MTV. You know, and at the time, like I admit, just uh, the optics of it at the time, it was like, hey, you know, I'm a cool guy. I'm a personable guy. And I, you know, I grew up with rock and roll. And um, And as I said, it worked at that time, you know. And coincidentally, that was also right about the same time, starting with him, that the Democrats stopped becoming, stopped being the party of like the disaffected, the poor, the working class, the, you know, people that are down on their luck. And it's shifted more and more towards the party of like the affluent and the Hollywood types and, you know, telling the left to buzz off. This is what they want to go back to. I mean, at some level, they want. What really is degrading, what really is insulting, is that at some level, they want young people and the left to be vapid. They want them to be like, you know, people like my age and older, people in their 30s and up, people that, you know, they want the teenagers today to just be on TikTok and Snapchat and playing Fortnite or whatever else. They don't want them to be engaged on issues because it's going to affect them. At some level, it's like, you know, how dare you question people in power? How dare you be doing re- your own research? How dare you question adults? How dare you challenge the system? How dare you want systemic change? How dare you want M- Medicare for all, Green New Deal, UBI, 
in the wars, you know, legalize marijuana, you know, on a federal level, um, massive, massive at the bare minimum, massive police reform campaign zero style, if not just, to, you know, defunding the police, how dare you, you want these things, you know, go, go back to being, you know, like I said, people like my, eight, you know, older millennials born in the eighties and older, it's like, whoa, rock and roll, dude, this is awesome, dude. You know, okay, it worked on us, and it took us a while. It took me, you know, a while to wake up to the fact. But, like, for young people today who's – if you're, like, 18 now, if you're born in 2002, most of your – almost your entire life has been on, online at some level. You know, they're not, they're not watching the corporate media. They're not – they don't care about stuff like that. They can do their research instantly, and, and that makes the establishment furious. So that they're they're you know they're holding on for dear life to everything they've got, 